Hi there and welcome along to Upping the Ante in association with 188Bet. I'm David Jennings from the Racing Post and delighted to be joined by my regular colleague Gavin Lynch. How are you Gavin? Good Dave, how are you? And we've got Tom Earl from our sponsors 188Bet. Now unfortunately Gavin, or fortunately, this is our second last episode but that means only one thing. 15 days to go. 15 days to go until the Cheltenham Festival kicks off. And with that in mind, what we want to know from Tom Earl from 188Bet is what is the worst anti-post loser in our sponsor's book? Morning, gents. Two weeks to go. All getting exciting. What are our biggest, uh, biggest anti-post punts with us in the build-up to the festival? Well, we went top price, 4-1, to one, might buy it for quite some time for the, for the Gold Cup. Uh, and the biggest anti-post bet struck by us have been on that horse on Mike Bite. That said, I do think it's one of the most competitive Gold Cups I can, I can remember. So we've got plenty of horses running for us. Um, we've also laid Farkless to price-wise punters for the, uh, for the Triumph. And plenty of bets at fancy prices on Getterbird for the Supreme the morning of his uh, Punchestown success. So a healthy anti-post book might bite the biggest anti-post punt with us. So my bite is 188Bet's biggest loser of the whole Cheltenham Festival. Gavin, he's 3-1 to favourite at the moment. Are you a fan? I would be a fan. It's hard not to be. 3-1 um, to one sounds about right. It's a very open race. The last couple of weeks have thrown a few... Uh, Spanners in yeah, the... Yeah, a few new kids in the block like our Duke and Native River. Uh, the two of them have really uh, bolstered their case. So looks a very open race. Even and total recall going in there as well. At those prices in front of us now, if you're to have a bet in the race, what would it be? Either might bite to win or maybe our Duke each way at 8 to 1. Yeah, I think I'm a big our Duke fan as well. That's a lovely spare for an old Bailey. Yeah, the last day was two and a half. He's won over 3 5, so he stays all day. So Yeah, so it's certainly a very interesting Gold Cup. And uh, our last weekend of clues, we're not going to see anything next weekend, I don't think. We don't saw think so. a couple of uh, last minute uh, performances, I suppose, uh, booking their tickets to the festival. Radician, first of mm. all, at uh, Kempton. An explosive turn of foot, Gavin. Yeah, he's shown that turn of foot the previous two times at. Uh, at Kempton, but this time he actually jumped well. The previous twice he did not jump well. He was very slow mm. at his hurdles. This time, I think Alan King said he'd, he'd school him over 100 hurdles in the meantime, so. Really? He, uh, his jumping was fine. He bolted up. Uh, he beat a horse, Malaya, of 134, so. He had a rating good in of 137. He's probably up to the mid 140s, which Apple Shakir is 146 at the minute. We have a dream of 145, so. You'd have to say Radician deserves to be second favorite. And our Alan knows a thing or two about Triumph Hurl winners, doesn't he? Yeah, and he actually says the Radician has more pace than Catch It. Mm. Catch It was more of a stare, even though it won the champion hurdle. But yeah, um, Penzance would be a similar type, would he? Say yeah, Radician, I think maybe. he said that. Yeah, um, but it's hard to know whether Radician will love Kemp or uh, Cheltenham rather because it's won three from three at Kempton. At least Apple Shakira has been to Cheltenham three times already. Mm. So, so if you were to to have a bet now in the Triumph, I'd s I think it's very hard to see past the mare. She's going to be getting the allowance, so I'd stick for Apple Shakira. It's favourite, but it's a very good. Triumph Hurdle looks very open. Yeah, it is very open. So that's Radician uh, who enhanced his Triumph Hurdle uh, credentials at Kempton. Now, there was also another couple of performances, and Global Citizen, I think, took us all mm. by surprise, Gavin. Definitely, yeah. Uh, it recently um, it had left John Joe, only had the one run for New Connections, a uh, new trainer at uh, Suddle. It won well, it got a rating of 130. That was a very poor race. It won at Suddle at 4 to 9. So to go and win that race. Your kind of prize? <laughs> to go and win the grade two on Saturday by nine lengths was a brilliant performance. Now, the only thing is that the ratings are coming out this week for the handicap, so it certainly won't be off, off anything like 130 by the end of the week. It'll be mid 140s, I'd say. But it it's may go for the county hurdle, it seems. Yeah, it may go for the county hurdle, so it'll have a chance, but it depends on the handicapper. Mm, uh, it certainly was a very impressive performance. It's very seldom in Kempton you see a race over so early. It was over before the home turn, like. Yeah, it made most of the run. It got uh, passed out early on, then it took the run over again, and it jumped great, and it won very, very well, yeah. And uh, at home at the weekend, carefully selected, gave Willie Bullens another strong mm. contender for the Weatherby's champion bumper. Willie has plenty to choose from for the bumper this year. Mm. It has the two joint favourites. Okay, the give us the pecking order. We want the pecking order of the Mullins bumper brigade. Um, number one. Black Bow. Number two. Is holographic. I'd number say. three. Carefully selected. Number four. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your top three anyway, you think? Yeah, carefully selected. Um, the bumper that I won at Christmas was two and a half miles, but it's worked out very well. The big dog, uh, Montpellier, Lone Wolf, Master of Tara, they've all ran mm. cracker since. So the form is very solid. And at the weekend, it dropped down to two miles. It beat a very nice horse of Jessica's, I'd say, press conference. It's worth keeping an eye on that horse in future, I'd say. But the time of the race on Sunday uh, was four minutes. 
There was four races ran on Sunday over two miles. There were 4.10, 4.11, 4.06, but that was the quickest of four minutes, so six seconds quicker than the hurdles. Well, it's funny, I was in Willie Mullins' this morning for his pre Cheltenham Press Day. We have it every year, two weeks before the festival, and Willie was asked about Carefully Selected, and he said to Patrick after the race, he said, uh, Patrick, he might he might have joined our team for Cheltenham, he said to Patrick after the race. And Patrick replied and he said, Willie, he's always been on our team. So oh. Patrick yes. taught a lot of him even going into the race on Sunday, which I thought was interesting. Was there anything else in Willie's today? Uh, there was a lot. There was a lot to take note of. And we, we'll have little nuggets throughout okay. the show. So you're going to have to stay watching to find out these little nuggets. There was one in particular, which uh, which a comment from Willie that doesn't usually happen. So okay. we'll wait till later in the show uh, to reveal that. Um, Machuca, Gavin, Fred Winter contender. It has to be. It has a rating at the moment of 135, but again, you don't know what rating it's going to get this week. I'd imagine it'll probably creep up to maybe a 140. I think it's four, four out of seven over hurdles. Jumps fantastic. Um, travels great. It'll be fantastic to watch Davy Russell. He's going to have to have balls of steel for this horse. He's going to have to give a Paul Carby and Archibald ride because as soon as he hits the front, it idles quite badly. So with the hill at Cheltenham, I think Davy's going to be playing his cards very, very late. That's what Gordon said after the race. He says, I can guarantee you that this horse will be in the bridle at the last. But what he does after that is anybody's guess. Which a bit like Campiador, one of those. Mm. He's going to have to ride it for very much a... He is improving though. Yeah, no, he's a good horse. Mm, yeah, no, he certainly is. Um, I, anything else from the weekend? That was about it, I think. Not particularly. There was a few other horses, but they're probably not going to Cheltenham, like Master D, Danny Kerwin, Hardline, Dr. Phoenix, Bells Hill, Surname. It looks like they're all avoiding Cheltenham. Yeah, anything out of that long-term Bells Hill Irish National? Yeah, I think Willie was more in time for the Irish National. Mm. Well, the prize money is so big now that with the trainer's title, he's probably going to go that way, I'd say. Certainly will. Um, but we're obviously interested in Cheltenham here on Up in the Ante. And what we want to know from you, Tom, is will 188 be rolling out any big Cheltenham offers in the coming weeks? So, 188 bet Cheltenham offers. Well, not just one. We go, we've got four. One for each day. And I'll come to... The, I think, standout one for, for day two last. So day one, 10% of your losing stakes back. Day three, the Thursday, we'll give you a refund if your horse falls. Day four, Gold Cup Day, we're going an extra place on all each way bets. So there's plenty of, you know, really, really trappy, competitive each way heats uh, on, on Gold Cup Day. Not least the Gold Cup itself. Now day two, the Wednesday, Champion Chase Day, we're going to go top price on all Willie Mullins runners for the day. Top price of all Willie Mullins runners. So that brings in horses like Next Des Destination, second favourite for the Ballymore. Invitation only, third favourite for the RSA. The Coral Cup, Max Dynamite, Bleu Rouge, two of the first three or four in the market. Min Duvan, Queen Mother Champion Chase, and then Black Bow, current favourite for the Bumper. So if you fancy Willie Mullins horses on day two of the Cheltenham Festival, 188 Bet is the only place for you. So some very interesting offers there, Gavin. And the one that interests me with regard to you right. is the one on Tuesday right. where you get 10% of all your losses back. So you might be getting back 2.3 million? Uh, a million anyway. God, that would be nice. That's a nice little uh, compensation. Yeah, that's a good offer. Yeah. 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 I think um, you know it, it can get to a stage so close to Cheltenham that sometimes it can be better to wait. I think this time last year, might bite was 2 to 1, I read. And he ended up SP in a seven to two. Mm. Like for example, get a bird at five or six to four to me is crazy. Crazy. He, he will definitely, definitely be two to one in the day, because of the definitely, first, definitely, because the bookies take each other on for the first race. They like to try and get people's attention and get new customers in. But he'll definitely be two to one at ten o'clock on the Tuesday. Yeah. You're you're pretty definite, definite. about this. I'm definitely definite. Okay. So uh, get a bird. Yeah. Wait. Don't do it now. Just wait until the so, morning yeah. of Tuesday. Um, and another question we want to ask Tom is, what horse are your traders happy to lay all day long for the Cheltenham Festival? So I had a chat to the trading team about some of the horses that we'd be keen to take on at the current prices. Uh, and some couple of quite interesting answers. Uh, so starting with the Arkle, happy to lay foot pad all day at even money. Uh, general feeling that could well drift nearer the time out to nearer the six to four mark. Uh, a few horses that would like to lead to show their best. Uh, other horses like Putty Mouchoir, you know, finished it in front of Footpad in last year's champion hurdle. Um, Footpad won't get his own way up in front. It's a competitive race, sort of like So Royal, you know, potentially sit off the pace and we've, we've through late on. Uh, so happy to take on Footpad at even money. Expect that to, to drift to longer. And also Sam Crow. Um, training guys say, look, four to seven. 
got to see it run, got to see it take its chance and uh, keen to see it on an undulating track and, and coming up that hill under pressure for the first time. So Footpad and Sam Crow, even money at four to seven, we will take on at those prices. Well, Gavin, if Tom is right, you're going to be very wrong because obviously Sam Crow and Footpad are in numerous bets in Gavin Lynch's accounts. Yeah, I'd say they're in most people's bets, to be honest. Mm. Um, I suppose most punters have had it reasonably okay for the last couple of months. Most of the horses are, are running, but yeah, Sam Crow would be in a lot of people's dockets. Mm, he certainly would. So hopefully he's wrong, and hopefully Sam Crow and Popag can do the business. Now, Gavin, the big news, I suppose, over the last couple of days was Q Card is going for the Ryanair, out to regain his crown. I was a little bit disappointed because I thought if, if Q Card had won the Gold Cup, it would have been a reception like we'd never see in Cheltenham again. I know that's been dreaming, but... Has he a chance in the Ryanair? He, he should have. I mean, uh, it depends He's on... He's now 8-1 with 188 bet. Obviously, if the ground was soft, he won't beat Wait and Patiently. Because won't? No. Because Wait and Patiently beat him easily the last day in Ascot. If the ground is good, then Wait and Patiently might go. Under so wouldn't be suited by, say, good ground, even though it won the race last year on good ground. So you'd have to have an each-way chance. I think it's the right race for Q card, mm. even at the age of 12. But Are you surprised they didn't just have one last lash at the Gold Cup? Actually, the Gold Cup is the Gold Cup. It's the main race of the week. But at the same time, they've probably picked the better option. Like, I very seldom get attached to horses. You know, I very seldom, you know, fall in love with horses. But I just thought that run, like that run at Ascot, it was just, it warmed your heart. It was a fantastic race that day. And they went so fast. And the two of them finished clear. So, like, he finished a long way clear at top notch, who's a similar price. So, mm. he has to have an each-way chance, Q card, definitely, yeah. Okay. So, Q card fans, of which there are many watching this show, do not give up. Q card has an each way chance at eight to one for the yeah. Ryanair chase, according to Gavin Lynch. And York Hill, I think, is going for the champion hurdle. Did he say that today? No. Yeah, that was another uh, no good from Willie. Uh, he reckons that York Hill is possibly 60 40 in favour of going for the champion hurdle over the Ryanair chase. It's quite a, a remarkable choice, isn't it? Yeah. To have a choice between the champion hurdle and the Ryanair chase, but I don't think he'd win a seller at Wolverhampton the way he's run at the moment, would he? Uh, no, I mean, he needs. Uh, uh a psychologist at the moment. Well, speaking of psychologists, one of the things I did note that there was a certain David Casey on York Hill this morning. And when David Casey sits on one for these crucial mornings, it's really interesting. So maybe David Casey is the magician to bring York Hill back to life. Well, Willie would just surpass himself if York Hill won a champion hurdle, to be honest, wouldn't he? Mm, certainly would. Um, there's some remarkable training feats which he'd done. One would be if Duvan came back to beat Altior in the Queen Mother Champion Chase. And if you got York Hill to win a champion hurdle, that would be some double. Yeah, you wouldn't back it, but you'd be no, great. No, that would be some double. But never underestimate the power of Willie Mullins. And speaking of York Hill, what's very interesting here is your next selection Yes. on our anti-post Cheltenham tipping guide from you is linked into York Hill. A yes. horse that couldn't even beat York Hill. You fancy to win the Sunbet Stairs hurdle this yep. year? Yep, uh, Janworth for the Stairs hurdle. Do uh, explain. He's 8 from 10 over hurdles. He's only been beaten, as he said, by uh, York Hill a couple of years ago in the Neptune. Uh, he also went off 2-1 to favourite for the champion hurdle last year, but he didn't have the gears for the champion hurdle. He previously had won uh, the big race at Kempton on the 26th. Uh, he bet at the new one, the Christmas hurdle by three lengths. So he, he does have gears. Um, he's had four runs over fences over the, the, the winter. That hasn't gone so well. He had two wins, he had a fall, and he had a second. But he's just not a natural chaser. Mm. Um, he's been very, very slow over his fences. You have to remember that he did beat Super Sunday last year in entry. He beat it by a length. And he did battle. I know people might have a question mark about Jan Worth battling, but he certainly battled He's a good day. win record, though. Yeah, 8 out of 10 yeah. over hurdles. Uh, he travels great. He jumps OK. Even hurdles, he only jumps OK. But I think uh, Barry will hold him up for a late run. And if the ground is decent, like he has won on the new course already, uh, over two and a half and heavy ground, so... But even you trying to make his case, okay? So you're yeah. trying to be as positive as you can. Yes. There's a lot of negatives in there about a horse that is only five to one. For the, you know, it's it's is that is that value? Well, he's better value than Super Sunday at three to one, or. But at least with Sam, Super Sunday, he's gone. He's won a Grade One. He's won at the track. There's surely more question marks about Janward. Uh, I think you know, he's beat him before. I think he beat him again. I think Sam Spinner is as slow as I am. Apples Jade won't go for the race. Faheen won't. Lammy Surge is one of your picks, couldn't have him. Uh, Penn Hill will be a danger because he won the Bartlett last year. But I just think that Janworth will come there tanking at the last. Really? Yeah, and don't forget, Bouverdere last year went back from fences to hurdles. It can be done. It can be done. It certainly can. Mm. To coin a phrase used in many uh, political campaigns. 
Um, and Sam Spinner is as slow as you. I just noticed that comment was thrown in there. I have to bring you back to that. Yeah, There'll be people watching this race, watching this show, that'll be thinking that Sam Spinner is their banker the whole meeting. Look, it's a game of opinions. I just think he's just... He's a very, very I've good horse. I've seen you run. Yeah, and that's it's very foot. slow. It is very slow. But um, I think he's just one pace, and I think he's susceptible to a horse like Yanwood that has a change of gear. Okay. Another in interesting thing from Willie Munns is Penhill does go for the stairs hurdle and also will be joined by Bacardi's, who seems to have come in under the radar, probably because he can't stay on his feet over fences. But yes. uh, it's an interesting hand from Willie. Penhill, who hasn't run this season, and Bacardi's, who's... Obviously, be running over fences. It's a strange uh, team. The Cardi's beat Finian's Oscar Punchdown last mm. year, so he's a good horse. Mm. But Penhill, do you think, has a small chance of tens on here? Well, it has to have if he came back to the form that he showed in the Albert Bartlett last year. Now, before I come to my selection, um, which is, is quite interesting, it's one under the radar. Uh, Willie Mullins this morning in Cloy Sutton, um, you'd be very pleased to hear this. Good. He said that Lorena, who's favourite for the Dawn Run Mayor's Novices Hurdle, is top notch okay. and that she's a star. Really? Now, there are two statements that Willie wouldn't usually use. And it's funny, I interviewed him before Lorena ran at Fairy House, and he said that he thought that she could be exceptional. Yeah. So he's using types of words that he doesn't usually use, which suggests to me that he thinks quite a bit of Lorena, which you will be very happy to hear. Yeah, what no. price have you back, Lorena? Uh, eight to one. Eight to one. Oh my God. Eight to one. I wouldn't mind a bit of that. Would you yeah. sell a bit of that to me? I might, Jay, although you should have told me before Fairy House what he thought of her. <laughs> yeah, I should have told a lot of people. Um, so on to my selection, um, and it is in the Fred Winter. Now, I know the weights are okay. only coming out, but um, I just think there was one that caught my eye when the entries came out last week. The handicaps are really interesting. And Nicky Henderson has so many juveniles, and he's got the favour for the Triumph Hurdle. It's hard to believe he has one entry in that the is. Fred Winter. That's it, one entry. And he has We Have a Dream as well. Triumph yeah, Hurdle. and it is Style the Guard, who... Um, I thought was very impressive on its British debut at Newbury. He gave six pound at an eight length beating to a horse rate 124. And it was very, very straightforward. Nico didn't really have to get too serious. Jump great, traveled really well. And um, that suggests to me he's rated 137. I think he could be a little bit better than that. And as well as that, he ran last time at Huntington in a race that just fell asunder. He went too quick, didn't settle. He will absolutely love the hurly burly of the Fred Winter. And I think they think he's a much better horse than 137. What's his name again? Style the Guard. Style the Guard. Style the Guard, yeah. So he would be my selection in the Fred Winter. I think he's, he's about 16 to 1. I'm not sure 188 about what he is at the moment. But uh, after watching this show, sure, surely he'll be backed into favour. Uh, I'd say so. Uh, Nicky is a great man with the four year olds, isn't he? He is some man yeah, with the juveniles, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he certainly is. And uh, so there you go. There's our two selections. For me, it's Style Lagarde in the Fred Winter. And for Gavin, it's the Enigma that is Janwert in the Sunbet Stairs Hurdle. So Style Lagarde will be added to a very illustrious list of selections yes. from me. Yes. Um, which I, I'm actually... It's yeah. funny, usually the closer the event comes, the, le the less happy you are. But I'm actually extremely happy with this list. And I think my list is beating your list at the moment. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't disagree with you. You have a lot of horses there with double figure odds. And do you know so. what? I'm ashamed to say I'm, I'm almost coming, coming full circle back around into the brain power. Oh no, don't start I that. am. Don't. I am, Gavin. No, 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 no. I am. No. Uh, I'm Lam giving him a chance again. You're not allowed to mention brain power or Lammy Surge. No. Um, uh, but don't apart touch from that, it, Don't Touch It has been the subject yeah. of sustained support for yes. the Grand Annual. Down to 8 and 10 to 1 now. And the one thing I'm worried about with no comment who I put up for the Close Brothers, he could potentially go for the four miler, okay. which he would be very interesting in as well. So uh, there you oh, go. You some very good ones presenting Percy Tully East, Squatur, don't touch it, Modus. Yeah, very good. Surprise? No, I do. No, no, no. Don't be so surprised, Gavin. <laughs> um, so there's my list. So this week, style the guard in the Fred Winter is going to be added to that list. And your list here, Gavin. We have a few um, funerals, unfortunately. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Esper Allen and Fountains Windfall won't be making it. Apart from that. Oh yeah, off you go was disappointing. He didn't yes. get entered at Chatham. Oh, my so. heart went out to you. Yeah, no, that was I went through the list and I typed in, you know, you put control F, just to, to instead of scanning through them, just put in, I put in, off you go, zero, zero, zero matches. Mm. I said, oh, Gavin Lynch will be distraught. Yeah. But, but look, put, who are we to... put to the kids to bed early that night <laughs> in frustration. Who are we to do, Charles Burns? But he's certainly a horse to keep an eye on if he appears at, say, Fairy House or Punchstown, but... Um, you must maybe think a lot of them that he's keeping them. I'm giving you three. I'm giving you three winners out of that list. Are you? Yeah, I'm giving you Lorena. Okay. Yeah, I'm giving you Cause of Causes. Thank you. And I'm going to give you... Do you know what? I'm only going to give you two. <laughs> I'm only giving you give two. Give me Footpad as well. Oh, 
that's a good article. It is. That is a good article. So that's it for this week's show, folks. Don't forget to join us next weekend when we'll have all the handicap weights. For how many handicaps do you have at the Chatham Festival, Gavin? Ten, five each, five hurdles, five chases. Is it? Yeah. I really wasn't expecting you to get that. <laughs> uh, Gavin is going to have numerous selections for the handicaps. How long will you spend studying them? A number of hours. It's, there's a lot to go through. There is a lot to go through. So that's it for this week. Don't forget... Hold on a second. Gavin, I've got some breaking news. What's that, Dave? There's a leading fancy out of the Chetland Festival. Fox Norton. Fox Norton is out of the Ryanair. Suspensory problem will not run in the Ryanair. Hot off the press, only been revealed in the last couple of minutes. How does that change the Ryanair picture? Uh, it's going to make it easier for him to so, saw, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. And Balco to flow. Yes. Were you giving Fox Norton a big chance? Uh, small chance. Well, he's no chance no now chance. because he won't be running. So that's this week's show wrapped up. Don't forget to join us next week when we go through all the handicaps.